Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2006 Acura TSX 6 speed manual in the shop. So we actually just did a clutch in one of these. And this car, uh, the owner has owned it for about a year and he's having this problem intermittently uh, that it just goes into limp home mode. He has to pull over, turn the key off, turn it back on, and keep driving. He said the, the code that sets is for the accelerator pedal position sensor and he's tried several, several replacements and aftermarket and OEM and he said the problem is only getting worse. Like on the way here, it's happened three times in about a three hour drive. So sometimes when he gets it in the morning, turns the key on, boom, check engine light, you're already in limp home mode. And he has to cycle the key a few times and away you go. And you could, Sometimes it drives fine for a day or two, but the problem still happens. So hopefully it'll happen for us here. Um, so let's uh, scan it for codes first. So in OBD2 mode, we have three codes stored. A 2138 throttle pedal position sensor switch DE voltage correlation. Okay. 2127 throttle pedal position sensor switch E circuit low. 2138 throttle pedal position switch DE voltage, or I'm um, sorry, circuit high. If circuit low and circuit high, <laughs> that's weird. And then this voltage correlation code. Okay, so let's look these up in all data. And while we're in OBD2 mode, let's just take a quick look at the freeze frame and see you know when this code set at least in this instance was the car moving was was the throttle being depressed so throttle absolute throttle position 14 percent load value zero warmed up all the way engine rpm zero so hopefully we can reproduce this right here right now Uh, um, so yeah, engine was off, vehicle's not moving. How cool is that? So let's go into uh, Honda mode now, because in live data, I don't think they'll show both accelerator pedal position sensors, although we can see. But for this, we need to go into OEM data for sure. So only 22 data pids here. Yeah, not very helpful. So let's back out. Yes, we want to exit. Asian, Honda, or Acura. Okay, Acura TSX 2006, that is correct. And So on Hondas, the ThinkTool Pros wants to scan like 50 different modules and the car only has, you know, like five. <laughs> so we're just going to go right into the engine computer. All right, we're in. Read fault code. Current DTCs. Okay, so it's showing them in different numbers here. 3714, 3712, 3713. These are, see, they're more specific. This is APP sensor B voltage low, APP sensor B voltage high, APP sensor AB correlation. So we're definitely dealing with the accelerator pedal here. Uh, let me just put these in a report. So in the Honda menu, we actually do have a read freeze frame option. And let's see, 3714 code, that would be the AB correlation code. Let's see what um, freeze frame we have in here. APP sensor 0%, APP sensor A, APP sensor B, 0 0.49, 0 0.45. Okay. Okay. 
So is 0.45 and 0.49 a bad reading? I don't know. Let's look at some live data. So APP sensor A, sensor B, and we can look at the throttle here too. A and B. Okay, and for these, you do want to graph these. So for example, I don't like that APP sensor B right now is 0 0.25 volts. <laughs> that, uh, that is not a good reading. So let's depress the accelerator pedal here. It comes back to 0 0.25, that's a low voltage. I'm going to go all the way to the floor. That one goes to 4.5. That one goes to 2.27. So, what's a known good reading for sensor B? Uh, let's look that up in OEM service info. Uh, look at sensor B right now. I'm not touching the accelerator pedal and their voltage is actually changing. It's 0 0.25 but it went up to like 0 0.37. It definitely wasn't pressing the accelerator pedal. Let's see. All the way down. Okay, let's just sit here and watch it. It went up to like 0 0.35. 0 0.27. So I think it's going to be a wiring problem. But what's a known good voltage? So the setting criteria here for this code for um, the 27 Yep, 2127 code, low voltage, is APP sensor B output voltage is 0 0.1 volts or less for at least 0 0.2 seconds. So we're at 0 0.25. Now is that good or bad? I'm just going to... Hmm... And by the way, for the 2128 trouble code, sensor B has to be 4 volts or more for at least 0 0.2 seconds. That would set the high code. So, we're not seeing that in scan data. So what's the next step? Try to get this thing to act up. Let's put a scope on, on, the, on the signal wires. And that would be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So wires three and four, sensor input B, sensor input A. So it's the red and yellow, red and blue. We can put a scope right on those and see what, um, if the scope agrees with the engine computer at all times. All right, so the APP sensor actually lives under the hood. I was kind of uh, surprised by that. Here, it's a brand new one. So, look at this. So, we're at 0 0.49, 0 0.29. So, wiggle the connector. No change on scan data. Let's wiggle the rest of the harness. I push on it right there. Look what happens to our... That's it, that's the problem. We're very, very close. I'm just lifting up on this harness a hair, and it's doing that. Boom, there's your high code. And can we get a low code out of this? So it's gonna be a bad, I'm assuming a bad ground, so before we disturb it too much, let's get a scope on these wires. 
And if we get a high code like that, I'm assuming we're going to have a bad ground or a bad signal wire. Um, just for kicks, let's unplug the sensor and see what the, uh, the signals go to. If this is a pull down or a pull up design. They both go to zero, so it is a pull up design. Okay, and if we're going too high, that's going to be a ground problem. That, just by knowing a little bit of circuit design, that's really cool. So let's uh, take a snapshot of that data. So when I went high, I pulled the harness up. When I unplugged it, both the sensors went low. So we know it's a pull up design. The signals are coming from here to the ECM. And if we're pulled up too high, that means we're missing a ground. So let's, uh, let's put a scope on the ground wire for sensor B. And I think we're almost done. <laughs> Look what uh, sensor B is doing uh, all on its own. <laughs> but anyways, so I'm back probed to uh, the known good sensor, sensor A ground. We have 30 millivolts. And the ground for my meter is actually on the battery ground. Very important for checks, use battery ground. Now my question is, will that ground light a test light? So let's uh, rig up a test light between battery positive now and that ground, see if it lights up. All right, so test light works. So we're gonna take this and plug it into here. We'll see if it lights up. See if that's a good ground. Yes. That is a good ground. So sensor ground can carry 300 milliamps of current. Now, let's move to the other wire. First we'll measure the actual ground voltage on our meter. Let me tie this to, to a ground. Okay, so this is on the bad sensor. There's the ground. I'm going to lift the harness. We'll see what happens to that ground. 4.9 volts and our sensor B goes high. Bingo. I push it down. We have a decent ground, not great, but look, our sensor is back, you know, something reasonable. So we need to find why that ground is bad. Now let's just put our test light on there, and we'll see <laughs> that the test light will probably flicker. The test light's lit. If I lift up on the harness, Test light's staying lit. Well, that's kind of crazy. And we're at 0 0.37 volts. What's the voltage on there? Plug this back into our meter. 250 millivolts. I'm actually surprised that that's the case. Huh. What if we unplug our test light? We're back to 30 millivolts. Did we fix it? Now we're at exactly 0 0.24. That sucks. We fixed the ground by running a high current through there. Hmm.
Dang. So there's definitely a problem here. We're almost at one volt. And you can see the signal is still erratic. But it's not dropping out to zero. We're not getting a high code again. So let's uh and there's nothing here between the ECM and the APP, so we could go to the engine computer. But man, that, that harness is very suspect. So I'm measuring the voltage on the ground wire at the computer. So sensor ground for, uh, let's see here. We want to focus on B. So it's going to be the red and yellow on pin A25. That would be let's see. Nope. I'm sorry. Sensor B sensor ground is A23, the green and yellow. So the green and yellow is actually over here. Okay, so 44 millivolts. But here we're showing 262 millivolts. Okay, so we unplug the test light, unplug our load. That drops to 30. This drops to about 25. So, nothing wrong at the computer or the connector at the computer. Uh, we need to focus on the harness. And it acted up when I wiggled the harness under the hood. And we can see here there's nothing, you know, for the sensor ground, see ground for EC PCM sensor circuit diagram 1515. So there could be a splice somewhere in here. Let's look at that diagram. Okay, so our grounds here, apparently, on this green and white wire pin A24 at the ECM PCM, it grounds the APP sensor the MAP sensor, and for an automatic transmission input shaft sensor, we don't have that. So just the MAP and the APP. So we could measure the, volt, the ground voltage on the MAP and see if it's also bad and focus on this splice. Hmm. That's the only, the only variable here is this splice. No other connectors. And, you know, we wiggle things here, nothing changes. So we're, we're basically good now, but you know, if we don't fix the problem, it will return. <laughs> so the wiggle check kind of, uh, and loading, loading the ground with the test light actually helped the current reestablish a good path. But there's still a voltage drop. So... So pin A20, let's see here, sensor ground, actually the green and yellow we want to focus on. So it's not the green and white, it's the green and yellow that we're worried about. So let's see here. So there's connector 1515A. Let's see, 15, 15B. There we go. That's the ground we're worried about. So IAT, APP, sensor B, and the ECT sensor. So we could measure the ground, you know, on there, the green and yellow wire, basically. This is the moment where the hard work, research, and effort pays off. It's really what makes the job worth it. So, so we know that the ECT sensor, engine coolant temp, it lives right, I see I just, I just saw it, right down there. And this comes in here. So I'm looking at the harness, looking for any visual signs of damage. This Honda harness is usually, when they're stock and clipped in, no issues. So I see this little, little divot here and the harness is kind of split on the bottom. 
So let's see what happens when I touch this spot right here. Look at our voltage again. And look at our APP sensor. So we're recreating the problem. Let me see if I can make this thing go super high. Is there something damaging the harness right in this spot? Or is that a false flag? It's the only suspicious spot that I see. We should not have half a volt on our ground. Ah, maybe I celebrated too early. Well, let's back probe the um, ECT sensor and see what the voltage is on there. Okay, so on the ECT sensor, test light's bright, 135 millivolts, and that does not jump around when we move the harness. You can see our APP sensor breathes back about 0.25 volts. So it has to be wherever this wire, this green and white, is spliced into the green and white tree. It has to be. Now where is that splice? I have no idea. Um, we could take a look, another look at the diagrams, but see that voltage is not changing. So on our ground distribution from the ECT sensor to the PCM we're good just where this APP is tied in see it says S3 thermal joint photo 21 let's see if we can find S3 thermal joint photo 21 so very interesting left side of engine S3 thermal joint apparently in this under this plastic cover the wires are joined together. That's really crazy. <laughs> let's uh, let's take a look at S3 thermal joint. This is photo 21 left side of engine. So I'm opening up this thermal joint holder, and I think we're definitely in the right spot here. Look at what our APP sensor is doing. This is crazy stuff. It's got to be, got to be where it is. There's another one. Look at all these guys. Let's get them out into the open and do a visual inspection. And there's more. There's like one, two, three, four, at least four of these thermal joints. Never seen that before. There's the green. This is the green and yellow tree. So I want to see when I pull on that. Here are all the green and yellow wires. And... Anything with our sensor? If we leave it alone. Still changing. I want to open this up. All right, so I found the green and yellow wire here in the harness. I'm just going to give it a little tug test. And we can see that our voltage is actually getting better, not worse. Oh man. <laughs> Do we fix it? Ah, this is really kind of frustrating.
154 millivolts. And now we're down to 0 0.27. And we're not messing with the sensor anymore. But I want to guarantee this repair. How do we fix the wire? I mean, we have absolutely no glitches anymore. 153 millivolts there. Let's check the other sensor ground. What kind of harness problem is that? You would think if you have a bad connection, it would not just restore itself. 133 on the other one. Basically, we're, we're fixed. <sighs> How is that possible? Dang.